Hi there, my name is Nick, and this is a very informal video. This is not how I normally film, and the dishwasher's going on in the background, but I am at a crossroads. I am doing something here in my apartment that I get asked about quite often, and I wanted to document the process for you guys and just take you along with me to show you what, what's going on. So I get asked very often on my YouTube channel about how I display my house plans. So just just you can see a little display behind me here, I guess. It's not really the most wild, but you know, they're displayed in a manner that looks pleasant to me. And I am in an area of my home that I am just really not happy with the way that it's looking. So I would like to change it around. Um, let me turn the camera around so I can show you guys what's going on. I have this really beautiful display of plants over here right at my desk area, if you will, where I do my work. It's a little messy, I apologize. But right above it, there are these three hanging plants and a wall basket where I'm displaying some plants. And I am just really not feeling it. It's looking a little sparse. It's not looking happy. The the pothos that's in the basket is just dilapidated at this point. So, And the plants that I have in the hangers right now, I have a Hoya Crinkle 8 on the left, a Hoya uh, DS70, I think they used to call it, or maybe it's the Hoya Bretonia, I don't, I don't really know, but it's, it's a type of Hoya as well, and then I have an Ashkenanthus on the right. So the issue I'm having is, one, the plants aren't very full, the Hoya in the front is fine, and I feel like that's the only one that has a chance of staying, but the Hoya on the left and the Ashkenanthus on the right are not really doing it for me, and to make matters even worse, I feel like they all have very similar leaf structure and growth patterns, so I'm just really not feeling this. And to even make matters worse, or if I'm being just super picky, I feel like that macrame hanger that I made is super boring, and I would like to make another one that is a little bit more intricate, but maybe doesn't look exactly like those two right there, so I'd like to keep things interesting. Perhaps maybe I'll use like jute, uh, jute rope instead, or maybe I'll keep it the same with the white macrame cord. But I just am not feeling this at all. So we are going to make some changes. I need it to look as lush and as beautiful as everywhere else in this area. And it's just really standing out as an eyesore for me. I mean, I'm here all the time, so maybe it's not as standing out as much to you guys. But for me, this is just an area that really could use a lot of work. So uh, it's time to do something about it. We have to make this space look the way that I had envisioned it many months ago when I hung up those macrame hangers. I think I did them at the beginning of this year and I am just realizing now it's hitting me like a ton of bricks that it's not looking <laughs> the way that I wanted to. So I would like to bring that original idea to fruition and I'm probably gonna be rambling for just a minute or two just so you're aware. So skip ahead if you don't wanna hear rambles, but I'm looking up at the plant display right now. And uh, as I said, all the plants look the same. There's two Hoyas and an Ashkenanthus or lipstick plant, and they really look practically identical from far away. It's not until I get up close where I can see that they are clearly different plants, but they're such subtle differences that I really need to rethink why I ever thought I would put those three plants up next to each other. I like them. I like all three of them, but it's just not doing it for a display. So like I said, the only one that really has uh, weight and staying really is the, the Hoya Bretonia because it's kind of got that lush look of what I'm looking for, but it is then again only kind of like hanging down as like a waterfall of plant, which I absolutely love, but I just don't know if that's what I'm looking for. In this specific display, I think I might be looking for more full lush cascading plants. So perhaps I'll uh, move that one to a different shelf where it can, I can really enjoy the way that it is cascading down because I really do enjoy the plant. I like all the plants. I don't dislike them. Um, the <laughs> Mandula pothos that's cascading down the back and looking just not very happy at all. It's a little dilapidated. Uh, it's going to have to come out. I'll take a few, couple cuttings of that so I can save it. But I'm going to have to find something to put up in that basket that's very resilient because it's a basket hanging eight feet up on the wall and I don't like to get up there and water it very often. And I also need to be careful because these are right above my computer, but I, the way I, I'm very careful. So that's not really a concern in my mind, but it's just the less I have to get up there to water it, the better. So that's what we're going for. So we need to think about what we're going to do. Um, do I want to change around my macrame hangers? Do I want to change around my pottery? Because it's three three terracotta pots and 
I think I'd rather it be all the same pottery or maybe like all different. So maybe I could do like a weathered terracotta pot and a ceramic pot or like, you know, a couple different colors of ceramic pots. I don't really know, but I would like it to look uniform and everything to go with each other. But I kind of have a running color scheme in my home that we're working off of. So as long as I really stick to that color scheme, I think we're going to do okay. But really the first and most important thing about this video is picking the plants for the display. So we want them to look different. Leaf structure uh, is very important. Even color could come into play, but leaf structure and leaf size is going to be the thing that's most important to us. So <clears throat> how, how can I find my plants? So I can go online. Oops, sorry. I thought I was about to knock something over. <laughs> I, I can go online and just see what's there to offer on Instagram and YouTube. I'm a little old fashioned because if I go on Instagram and YouTube, I'm just going to see a lot of trendy things and I'm not necessarily looking for what's trendy. I'm looking for what's going to look good. So uh, I like to use uh, books, indoor gardening books. I don't have many, but this is a fun one right here, the indoor gardening book. And this is from the 90s, so there's no influence from <laughs> social media. So um, there's no pink princess in here. Uh, and it's just going to be a helpful way of deciding like which plants are going to look good with each other. Like that's what these many of these books are about. And I would probably look for an older book if you're going to do this, not trying to shade out anybody who's writing any new books because I'm sure they have really good things to say, but they're going to be influenced by social media and the plants that they have to offer. So I would say the older the houseplant book, the better. So I'm going to roughly look through this book um, and I will show you guys as well what I think is pretty cool and what's standing out to me. I definitely have to hone in on the Syndapsis Pictus Fine right here because I'm a huge fan of Syndapsis and you really can't have enough. And I think that's one that would really look good in that area. Mind you, I probably wouldn't put any other pothos in the display. I mean, I might, you know, Last Resort is always a nice pothos, but I think a Syndapsis is one that I absolutely love and would look fantastic. And I think I actually have one in my home that I could use for this display already. So I think that that's kind of something that I'm going to be heavily leaning towards and I know it can handle some lower light if I want to put it in the lowest of the light conditions that my display has to offer. And bearing that in mind, I feel like that's something important that I kind of skipped over is that I really need to keep in mind the lighting conditions that these plants are going to be having. So the two macrame hangers on the left, the one on the left and the one on the front are getting a good amount of light. They're right off of that southern facing window and they're getting hit by that uh, sunlight that's coming through throughout the day. But the macrame hanger all the way on the right and then the basket in the back are receiving rather low light. I mean, they're still in the vicinity of that window, so I could probably get away with, you know, a medium light plant, but uh, hopefully the other plants I put there are lush enough that it might actually kind of block out some of that light even more, causing it to be very heavily dappled light. So I really need to consider lower light plants for those two spots where I can consider brighter light plants for the other two positions. I think these pages on trailing plants are probably going to be the most helpful for me since that is exactly what I'm trying to accomplish versus other pages like climbing plants because that's not what I'm looking for. So uh, we see a couple standard ones right here, and I absolutely love Heartleaf Philodendron. I actually don't think I have one of those in my home anymore, so it would be kind of nice to get another one, and they're usually sold quite lush. Not as lush as this, mind you, but uh, probably like half of that, and they're quite inexpensive, so that's a really good option that would look really good, but I'm not sure if I would want to pair that with the Syndapsis Pictus, so that's something I have to bear in mind there. So I think I would use one or the other, but like I was saying... I feel confident that this one could flourish in the lowest light situations. Um, and I don't want to do a pothos. I think that, yeah, I have plenty of those in my home. And um, Tradescantia, I don't think is going to do that well for me either. I have a Hoya Bella that I would love to be as lush as this one here, but I just don't think it is right now. So I don't think I'll be doing myself any favors if I hang that up. Plus, my issue already is that I have a Hoya already there but you know what I think I think I want to move the oh gosh maybe I don't but I, I kind of want to move the Bretonia and because I think that the Hoya Bella would be really nice to have in that display and I would hang it up kind of close to the southern facing window that it would hopefully flourish so that's a really good idea another Tradescantia down here that's gorgeous but I just don't think that that's going to work out for me but you can see right here how similar that the the Hoya Bella and the Columnia or the um it's a type of goldfish plant I believe uh, is it goldfish plant or 
is that lipstick plant? I don't know. I think it's it's one of the two, but they look so similar. So I wouldn't want to hang up a Hoya Bella and a Columnia right next to each other because then I would have the same issue that I'm having already. There's another trailing plants one here. <gasps> oh my gosh. I feel like I should use a spider plant. I've been kind of wanting to grow a spider plant. I do not grow it because my roommate's cat would chew that thing down to the nub. Um, but I feel like this is a great opportunity to grow a spider plant. So I think that is an option that I am going to hopefully go for. And it's very inexpensive and they're fantastic. Like I do not knock um, common plants. Like I think they're the best plants. Like they're common for a reason because they, they grow really fast. Um, I don't think there's really anything else on this page here that I would consider using, but I think the spider plant's a very important one that uh, I would probably use. Creeping plants, I don't think that's gonna really help us, uh, but we can kind of get the gist of you know that that would that would work like a creeping ficus would work but that's just too high up and too hard to care for okay we're just going off the rails here so um i am kind of i'm feeling this i'm feeling this and i'm feeling this like i you know i could always look on instagram like i was saying to find something else and I could also just look around my home and see if I have any other plants because I'm sure I could just use what I already have rather than going out and buying a spider plant, but that's not going to set me back very much. Um, but I, I, I think that this is a great leaf shape, that's a great leaf shape, and that's a great leaf shape for the, the macrame hangers. So I think that's something that I really want to consider. Now the basket, I could do another... Um, I can just show you guys from my angle. There's the basket up there and there's the three hangers looking very sad. And I'm like thinking to myself, like, do I want to put like a ZZ plant in there? So I just never really have to think about it. And it's kind of like foliage that's going like upwards. So let's, let's look back at climbing plants. I don't think any of these here, I'm not showing you guys in the best way. So there's the philodendron, which I have one of these and it's a large uh, moss pole of it. And I just don't think I want any more. So I don't think any of these are going to be perfect for what I'm looking for. Bushy plants. Like a fern would be really nice, but not like not like a maiden hair fern because that would die in like a second. But like I'm talking like, you know, a kangaroo paw fern or like a staghorn fern would probably perform a little bit better. And mind you, this is an older book. Like I said, I kind of prefer them since they're less trendy, but um, you know, not all of these plants are gonna be probably as readily available. Maranta, no, I don't think I would have the attention span to be able to remember to water that. Okay, okay, okay. So I don't think we're gonna really find much. Sorry, I'm going, going really fast and I'm realizing I'm filming this. So let me, do you guys care? You can pause. I'm gonna, if you really wanna see this book, you can go buy it, but I don't know how out there it is. I think I got this at the thrift store. You can pause if you want to take a look at anything. Um, Rose that plants would be really fun. Queen's Tears, that's a type of bromeliad. That would look really good. I grew that one time. I love these bromeliads. I think that they are so gorgeous. Oh, that would look really good. A bromeliad up there? That's kind of like what I'm looking for. Like that rosette shape and like the flower coming out. I mean, the flower wouldn't last very long, but I, I love these kinds and I've really been wanting to grow them for a while and I feel like That'll be an excellent excuse to grow one. Let's just finish flipping backwards this book just because I feel like some of you might be curious to see if you don't care. Feel free to skip ahead. I love this begonia, begonia filosia. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Filo, fil, filiosa, begonia, filiosa. Okay, sorry. Um, it's a gorgeous miniature leaf begonia, absolutely stunning, and I love this. See, that's what I love about these these books. Like, I don't think anybody's gonna talk about begonia foliosa on Instagram, but this is also kind of what we're looking for: upright plants. So Sansevieria, I think I want to go without. Dracaena's fun, but I think it's a little, you know, like I said, I don't like to knock common plants, but I think that's just a little too like hotel lobby for me. Chinese evergreen would be a really excellent option and I'm sure oh my gosh wait that might be a really perfect option because I have so many of those around my home so I love the bromeliad idea and I'm not knocking it but I have multiple Chinese evergreens around my home that I feel like would be perfect size oh Tanantheus would look so it's funny that they call it Calathea macoyana um 
Tananthi would be gorgeous, but I think I would probably kill it. But I'm Chinese Evergreen might be the one. It might be the winner because then I wouldn't have to go buy it. But I think I'm going to have to go get a spider plant because that would do or it would do very well. It would look good. Okay. So that's that guy. Okay. So yeah, that's, that's that. This is how we were picking this display, quite frankly. So let's go ahead and get the plants. It's been a couple of days and I've done my plant shopping and figured out what I think I'm going to do. So it's pretty much on par with what we had discussed after looking through the book. So I got this uh, Bonnie spider plant, the curly spider plant that's going to be going in the front, I believe. And I have the Syndapsis pictus exotica, which will be going on the right since that's going to be the lower light area. And this has been growing in a very low light area in my home, so I feel confident that it will still flourish in that area. And then I think I decided I'm going to grab, I had two of these Aeschcananthus uh, longicaulis. And there was the one all the way on the right, and I don't think it was loving that light situation. So I think I'm actually going to repot both of them together in a six-inch terracotta pot and hang them on the left where the Hoya Crinkle 8 was. And I think that those, those will perform a lot better in that scenario. Oh, we have a muffin coming through. Hello, sweets. Hello, sweetie. And then I was also thinking for the basket, I have the Sansevieria cylindrica, some type of it. And I think that would look really interesting going upwards and out of the basket rather than having something trail down since all three of these will be trailing down. So... I think this will be an excellent option. It'll be interesting. I won't have to really worry about watering it. I can say for sure that I could probably go a month without watering this and it would be okay. Hello, sweetie. But um, yeah, I think that is a good situation to be in. I think all these plants are gonna look fantastic together. I think they're all going to flourish in their situations. And the last thing to do really is to just get them in their spots. Wrapping things up, the display is all ready to go. It looks fantastic. It's just how we planned it just a few moments ago, so I have the spider plant and the lipstick plant receiving more of that sunlight because that's a southern facing window, so it gets a lot of sunlight. And then I have the syndapsis and the sansevieria kind of where the light is a little bit more dappled, so I think they'll be able to handle it very well. And the only other thing I really changed about this display is, um, besides the plants of course, is the macrame. So I changed these two out because um, for one, I wanted it to be a little bit more interesting with this one was plain beforehand if you recall. But specifically with these terracotta pots, I went with two terracotta pots and one ceramic pot. So to kind of keep these two looking fresh, since they're both basically the same pot, I went with two different macrame styles so that it kind of stands out a little bit more and just keeps it a little bit, you know, more exciting to the eye. So we're all finished. The display looks fantastic. I'm so much more happy with the way it looks now than it was before. And honestly, I did all this with plants I, ran, I had around the house, except for the spider plant. Of course, you, know, you would expect me to have a spider plant with as many plants as I have, but I did not have one. So I'm really happy with the way that it really fills out. And the lipstick plant, I actually had another lipstick plant in my home. So I combined the two of those into a larger pot just to kind of make it a fuller hanging basket. And hopefully it'll flourish uh, a lot better here next to the window rather than kind of hidden where it was. So yeah, I'm really happy about this project. And then this is a very rough video. This is very informal compared to the videos I normally do where, you know, I'm sitting on my little set area, but I just wanted to talk about this since, you know, a lot of people ask about this. So thank you guys so much for joining me. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.